Hi, my name is Herman Prieto. I am a Colombian seismologist. I want to answer one big uh, question, and that is uh, being able to predict the ground shaking, the shaking of the ground due to large damaging earthquakes. And in order to do that, uh, we or I focus on, on two main questions the physics of earthquakes and the 3D structure of the earth. So on the first question, the physics of earthquakes, um, we ha you have to understand that uh, earthquakes are a complex process and there's a large diversity of earthquakes. So for example, in, if you compare earthquakes with volcanoes, you have volcanoes with mild uh, effusive eruptions in some places and sometimes you see eruptions uh, that are uh, violent and eruptive. That depends on the location uh, of the uh, of the volcano, the composition of the magma, etc. Lots of uh, parameters. Earthquakes are similar. You can have differences in earthquake shaking and earthquake behavior due to the position in terms of the tectonic plates, depth, uh, different um, parameters as well that explain this diversity of earthquakes. So I want to understand this diversity and uh, it's useful because we need to understand the shaking of the very large events but they don't happen that often and we don't want to wait for it to happen in order to, to understand what's going to occur on the surface of the earth. So we study the small events and the big question is can we use small earthquakes to predict or to know or to understand the physics of the very large ones? And the short answer is, is yes, but obviously there are some caveats. Um, one example, one recent uh, research I'm, I'm uh, working on right now is uh, studying the difference between shallow events, events like in the San Andreas Fault, on the San Andreas Fault, 15 kilometers depth maximum, versus very deep events, earthquakes that occur at 150, 200 kilometers depth, in principle, you wouldn't expect events or earthquakes at those depths because temperatures are so high, pressures are so high that materials should deform plastically. But they do occur. 25% of the catalogs are deep events. So there has to be a physical mechanism, physical mechanism that allows these earthquakes to happen, to occur, and we're trying to understand how or what the physical mechanism is. I did my undergrad in geology back in Colombia on a very classical field geology uh, undergrad program. Uh, later on I, I started my PhD, my, my graduate school at Scripps Institution of Oceanography where I worked with uh, a number of people, Peter Scherer, Frank Vernon, um, Bob Parker on seismology, inverse theory, signal processing. And uh, then I went to a postdoc at, at Stanford, working more on, on studying the structure of the Earth rather than the physics of earthquakes. And I went back to my home country. I started up an assistant professor position there. Um, and uh, then I was uh, given the opportunity to come to Ypres. And obviously uh, here there's a, a great history of uh, earthquake seismologists and I want to uh, continue that history.